bevo.com. Daniel, you talk about the sort of a, a sort of a cultural clash between the Westerners and the, uh, the people in the Far East, because the Asians are much more sort of collectivist in their approach to business and family and everything else. Over here, it's much more the role of the individual. So can you tell us about that and the possible implications on people doing business in the Far East? Anyone who's lived in Asia uh, for any length of time, particularly in the East Asian culture, uh, and who's from the West, uh, has noticed that there's a real difference in how Asian cultures relate to themselves, people in Asian cultures, and Westerners. Um, in uh, the uh, conversation I had with Howard Gardner we, on the series Wired to Connect, we go into this more deeply, but in short, in Asia, the self is an expanded self. It's your family, it's your unit, it's your clan. It's not just you as an individual. This is in stark contrast to individualist cultures in the West where it's all about me. It's not my family. Uh, and the most extreme cultures this way are Australia, UK, the US, and so on. Uh, and this means that there's a very different sense of who I'm working, I'm, who my ambition is for. In the East, it's for my company and me. It's my family and me. And in the West, it's more often than not just me. And that creates uh, interesting problems both ways. But it also means that when we relate across cultures, we need to understand what the deep motivation is and what the orientation toward the self is of the people we're working with. So is that why in China, Guangxi and the connections and partnership relationship management is so, so critical as opposed to it's more relationship, less transactional like it is over here in the, in the in, world? Yeah. Uh, one of the signs of a collectivist culture is the, the relationships are fundamentally important. You would never, in a collectivist culture, you would never just sit down with someone you never met and just go straight into the business agenda. You could do that easily in the States. It's quite appropriate there. You might have a little bit of chit chat. In Asia, you'd have tea, you'd have a drink, you'd get to know each other, talk about your family and your life and so on. Then at some point you get around to the business part. But that's because you can't do business without a relationship. And many Westerners who start doing business in the East misunderstand this. And they, uh, they really make a very bad impression. And also, uh, when it can work the other way too, in that Westerners who are not used to working cross-culturally can be frustrated by the fact that, the peop that these people who've come to do business with us don't seem to be interested in business, not understanding that first they want to form a sense of a relationship. Okay. So if I, take a, if I interview a Chinese person soon, it will probably be a three or four hour interview as opposed to... <laughs> yeah, but you, you could have a good meal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> by the way, if you'd like to go out for a meal after this, I'd be delighted. <laughs>